All right, everybody. You know how we do when we do it, and we doing it live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back to Riffin with Griffin. And we did it. I went out of town and I finally got to go to the movies. So I saw Dune 2. And on the plane ride over, I saw the Hunger Games prequel. Um, Rachel finally convinced me to watch Love is Blind. Have some thoughts on that. But everybody, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to Riffin' with Griffin. We back in the house. Uh, you know, this is how we do it. Uh, but anyways, I want to say thanks for watching Riffin' with Griffin. Please make sure you subscribe. Uh, hit the notifications button so you know when I go live. Um, if you want to see it live, but hit the notifications and the subscription anyway, so you can get the show when I'm, uh, you know, when it's when it's just you know on Twitch. I'm on Twitch most days. I'm gonna go on Twitch after this. And <clears throat> if you really want to support the show, support me. I got bonus content on Patreon. Uh, you know, so hit, if you want to be a part of the show, I got to, it's called Monday Nuance, where I go into a subject and really, you know, I love the word nuance, so I really get into it, cause, effects, and personal stuff. So if you want to be a part of that, I mean, there's a free trial, and then, you know, become a subscriber if you're so inclined. Or you could be a subscriber on Twitch, too, because if you subscribe on Twitch, you can get that stuff also you can watch me do it live as well on Twitch cuz that's a subscriber only situation so thank you for that you know and before we get started i want to shout out to the sponsor of the show Robin Hood Robin Hood Robin Hood if you only have a 401k and you're not getting the most for your for retirement add an IRA then boost it by 3% with Robin Hood and if you transfer it in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. There's no limit to the match. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. And now for a list of legal info. Investments involve risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfer subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial LLC, member of SIPC. So thanks to Robinhood, and that's a great deal, by the way, guys. And anybody that's uh, trying to invest in their financial future, that's actually three percent is actually a really great deal. Anyways, um, welcome back to Griffin with Griffin. Today's show, you know, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about Dune today, Dune. But I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> Not gonna talk about Dune yet. Uh, welcome back to the show, all you beautiful people out here. Uh, thanks for being in the chat. Welcome back to the, to Riffin with Griffin. Um, you know, I went to um, let's get caught up on the week here. I went to Atlanta this weekend. It was uh, really, I had a really good time in Atlanta. That was, uh, I, I mean, you know, I haven't traveled in, in a little while. Uh, you know, because I knew I was going to have the baby. The last show I did was actually in San Diego. And that's like, you know, San Diego is actually pretty close. So it's not like I really had to go that far to, uh, you know, do the show. So it was, you know, but this was like, I got to say, this was actually really harder than I realized it was going to be. 
you know, I'm, I'm packing and I'm getting everything together. And then like, you know, I'm about to leave and there's Rachel. She's getting emotional because it's like, you know, she's going to be here with the baby by herself. And she's also very loving. And then I'm just like looking at my kid and I'm just like, oh, man, I'm going to be away for a few days. So it was like a lot harder than I thought that was going to be. Um, you know, it was funny. Somebody in the comment uh, thing says, was everyone there wearing all the things? That's so funny you say that because I'm at the gate at the, in, in my connection flight on the way to Atlanta. I, was, I think I was in Houston, I think it was, right? <laughs> and it was just so funny. Uh, this, this, uh, this black guy walks up to me and he's like, yo, man, you was in that video. He was like, and then he goes, where I know you from? I think I know you from this video. And I was like, oh, about Atlanta. And he was like, oh, that was fun. And he was just like going in, like making a big scene about it. Like, you know, that was so funny. So it's like, it's crazy how viral that particular video went. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was fun. It was fun times. But I will say like it was, it was harder than I thought to be away from my kid for the first time like that since, you know, you know, I've been I've been with him every day since his birth, you know. So even though it's only been like six, seven weeks, it was still like, you know, six, seven weeks of the beginning of his life. And, you know, he's that's my life now where it's like you wake up, there's your baby. Um, it's I mean, I don't know about anybody with newborns and stuff like that, but to sleep, man, to sleep is tough. I mean, it's tough. You know, this kid just won't sleep like, 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 or it's like, it's weird. So we have like a thing. So, you know, he wants to feed all night or he, he just wants that comfort of like being next to his mom and having a, a nipple in his mouth. You know what I mean? You know, I don't blame him. Ah, like father, like son. No. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little weird, right? You know what I mean? So it's like when you're trying to get used to it, it's hard. Like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know how this works. Wait, you know what? My green screen is messing up. Is that, is that? I gotta fix my green screen, y'all. I just noticed that right there. Anyways. So, you know, we had to, we, we had to come up with these, like, we come up with these patterns, you know, to, to figure out uh, how to do it right. So... And then it's like uh, he does, you know, you, you want to swaddle, swaddling like, uh, like my kid will fight, and then he's let's say we swaddle him, and then we hear like, meh, meh, you know, he's like sleeping and he's like meh, struggling. Then we look down at him and his arm is out. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's like trying to get his arms out. He don't like to swaddle, but it's sometimes the only way that'll keep him sleeping. So yesterday Rachel went out with him. And she went all the way to Malibu and she was like just hanging out. He she had him the whole day even though he was sleeping and stuff, but just out and about. And then last night, it was like late, you know, I'm holding him. She wants to shower and all this kind of stuff. And what will end up happening is I'll try to put him to sleep, you know? So I'll, I'll have him, like, first we have to, like, burp him. I'm rocking him. Like, I, the way I burp is, like, I put my hands underneath his chin. I hold him. And I and I put him in a circle. It's one of these videos I saw on Instagram where you like you just circ you 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 have him sitting, put your hand to support his head, and the other hand on his back. But you just turn him in a circle, right? Move him like this, and he'll burp. It's crazy, big burp. But the thing my kid will do too is he'll fall asleep too. So if, so then if I hold him like that, lean him forward a little bit, and I just rock him back and forth. And, in, and around, he'll start to yawn. His little eyes will close. Then he'll go to sleep. And then I can lay him down gently on my chest. And then I let him sleep for five, six minutes, sometimes longer because it's so adorable. adorable. And then I'll, turn, then I'll put him in a little snuggle sack, you know, because we have a snoo. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but the snoo is this thing that moves the baby. And, when, and, the, and, the, and it knows when it starts to cry and get irritated and it'll move faster. So they got four levels. The fourth level is crazy. The fourth level is like, you know, you on a roller coaster, it looks like. It looks scary, but I, mean, I guess, you know, it's, you know they, they, they said it's okay for kids, right? So, well, uh, so instead of like, so it has a swaddle thing and a zip up right in, inside the, uh, is inside the snoo. But, you know, what I'll do is, by the way, I just need to know something real quick. Is, is my stream getting blurry to, to you? Oh, never mind, because I have my quality low. So that's why it looks like that. 
Never mind. Sorry. Anyways, um, so I'll put it. So it, it the snoo has a a, a a swaddle in 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 it. You put them in it. You, you, you do this, and it has something on the feet, and then you can zip them up, and he's like right in there, nice. But what we have to do is, I gotta put him in a sleep sack. Make sure he stays asleep, and then I pick the whole sleep sack up, put it in this this uh, snoo, then like double put the strap him in in that also, and then he'll sleep for like five six hours. Last night it was the first time in like a, a two weeks that he like slept for a good amount of time, so we were able to get some sleep, and then he gets up, and then it's like you know. But as long as Rachel gets some sleep, because normally what I'll do is she's just up with him. And so he has to, like, he's sort of sleeping next to her, right? And she's, you know, really, and it's hard to really sleep because, you know, you're always nervous. You're going to, you know, all these stories you hear about smothering the baby. But, you know, there's no pillows or anything near him. Like, you know, it's just Rachel's there, and he's, like, right next to her, right next to her. So when it gets to a certain point, like, say, like, 6 a.m., you know, then I'll, I, I see that he's not feeding anymore, and he's, like, fast asleep. And then I'll say to her, I'll take the baby. I say, All right, I'll take him around 6 a.m., and then I'll lay him on me. And then I'll just, you know, sort of like half sleep where he's just laying on my chest and I'll just like be there in bed with him. And sometimes that'll be like an hour, two hours. And then I'll just get up with him, take him downstairs to the nursery or and I just let her sleep till whenever she wants to sleep when I'm home. So then she'll like sleep till like, you know, noon, sometimes one. And then she gets up refreshed and then she could take him for the rest of the day. So I just don't know how people do this without a partner, you know. I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like I, so it's like, shout out to all single parents and it's mostly single moms, right? I don't know how they do it. I really don't know how they do it. You know, it's, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's like, just, and then here's the other thing too. It's like, so when I was a kid, my mom used to tell me, not when I was a kid, but say like more like a teenager where I had more understanding of certain things. My mom used to tell me, she was like, you know, I don't, she was like, I wish I could have been a stay at home mom. So I always knew that that was going to be what I wanted for when I got married, that my wife was going to be a stay at home mom because I knew my mom really wanted that. And so I told Rachel too, it's like, once she got pregnant, it was like, Hey, it's up to you. If you want to do it, it's fine. But I would prefer you stay home, you know? And so, yeah, so that's what the situation is now. So, you know, Rachel's not, she don't got to go back to work anymore because I don't want her to really. And, it, you know, and she don't need to. She ne- Rachel never needed to work. It's just like something she wanted to do. And so, you know, here we are. And so I told her, I was like, no, nah, don't do that. Just, you know, if you don't want to. And she's like, yeah, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. So I was like, all right, cool. Then that's what you'll do. Maybe we'll probably want to have another kid. I don't know. But it's like, but here's the thing why I'm bringing this up. All you moms out there, kudos to you. Because Rachel's breastfeeding. So, like, her maternity leave would have been up already, and she would have had to go back to work. How the hell do you do that? Like, how the hell do you do that? Like, she's breastfeeding. So, she says to me, well, a lot of, she knows moms at their at her, at her old job. You know, they in the bathroom at lunchtime or whatever, pumping. And then you have to keep the milk in the refrigerator at work. What? Like, think about that. How do these people do? Like, these kids have to feed every however hours, right? So then you're like, you're piling up breast milk all day from work, and it's in like some weird refrigerator, and then you have to bring that home at the end of the night, put it in your refrigerator, use that to feed your. I mean, I just absolutely don't know how people do it, you know? Because you know we're we're in a situation now where you know like Rachel just went. She just like took the baby. She's gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna go to like Manhattan Beach or whatever she's gonna do and hang out with the baby. Go to baby stores and just like you know roll around with her like her nice stroller. And it's just like you know people are like yeah people say pumping and formula. You know and there's some moms who don't want to give their kids formula like as much formula like they don't want to do fifty fifty. Maybe they just want to mostly breast milk and then you top off with formula if the kid needs it. Or whatever, you know, so it's like, man, I just, it sucks. You know what I mean? It sucks because that's, to me, like this is, you know. And yeah, it's like, so you get that age-old question about like, you know, of course there's these women who are like, oh man, I'm a, I'm a career woman. I'm an independent career woman and I have this and that. And I go, hey, you know what? Kudos to you. If that's your life and that's what you want to do, that's great. Okay, so, you know, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But on the other side of that, 
don't make women feel bad that want to that want to do an equally if not more important job for themselves and their family by staying home like having their husband be the breadwinner and go work and you know and and then she's home taking care of her kid taking care of the house like don't make that out to be like that's some wrong thing because it's not you know it's like i just want to say shout out to all types of women that want to do all different things because first of all what i saw my what my wife went through in childbirth man it was a lot it was scary i guess we could talk about it now it's like you know rachel Rachel almost died you know and it's and this happens to a lot of women you know so the sacrifice that women make to deliver a baby is like i have so much more respect for women right now how I approach things, even with my comedy, you know what I mean? I like making fun of women because they're hilarious and they're 50% of the population. So it's like, you know, you're the women are fun to talk about. They're just emotional, hormonal creatures. And so, and they do things that are just inherently funny for comedy. But what I've realized now is like, okay, so I'm just changing my perspective. So I might, I'm going to have the same type of jokes, but instead of it being like, um, where women are say the butt of the joke, they're going to be the celebration in the joke. I'm trying to work on that. How about that? So what I'll say is this after that, again, we have to celebrate all the types of women and their choices. I have nothing wrong with a woman that wants to be a career woman and all that, right? You want to be a career woman and you want to do that. That's your priority. Cause that's you. You're about you. That's, that's a, and, and listen, as a, as a man, it's easy to say that because like every guy that, that's career driven, they get it. You know, you, when you're really career driven and you're all about what you do, you that's your main priority and your family is your side piece. I mean, it's, it's a tough thing to say, but that is what it is, you know, because, you know, because, you know, when you when you're like, oh, I have to like I've worked so hard to get to this. You know, what I mean, think about like if like a professional athlete. And they get traded. They don't go, You when, when do you see a professional athlete go, well, I guess I have to leave the team because my family, they really like staying in this one city. So we're going to, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm staying here. No, they go, uh, get your shit together. We're, we're moving to the new city. Kids probably got family, friends, and they're like, I don't want to leave. And they're like, you pack your shit. We're leaving. It's just how it is because that's that professional athlete's dream. And he's also getting generational wealth to take care of his family. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes. And so, like, even in the entertainment business, like, you know, you're an actor. You're an actor, and this has been your dream. And you get some dream part. And they say, well, you have to go to Australia for six months to do this part. You look at your family like, I got to go do this, you know? And then if, if, if you're in a certain situation where you'll be like, well, you can bring your family, then you're going to try to do that. But if you can't do that, you go into Australia. That's just, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. That's just how that goes, you know? And, I, and I'm in a situation right now where I go, damn, I see how hard this is. But for me, I'm thinking about my kid's future. You know, I'm thinking like I live in this great townhouse, you know what I mean? But I don't own it. I'm renting. You know what I mean? It's like, in, in you know, so I'm like, oh, I want to buy a house. So to do that, I got to go out here and bust my ass and work. I got, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's, and then you have to like balance that with like, but I also want to be in my kid's life. I want to pick them up from school. You know, I want to go to all his games or recitals or whatever my kid is into. So it's like trying to balance that. But as, as the breadwinner, you, you have to think about all that. And so, but at the same time, you, you know, you also keeping yourself, you know, so I think that people that are career driven, you know, you're selfish and it's OK. Just own it. You know what I mean? Just own it. But what I'm saying is don't bad mouth the other side. You know what I mean? So it's like if you're a woman that wants to have a job and a career, don't make this about men versus women. I hate when they do that, too. Well, a man gets to like, no, what are you talking about? Like if if if, if milk, if there was milk in both bodies, like let's say like that's how it should be. OK, like it should be like when you have a baby. Like the men grow breasts too, and they're like, "Oh, I, 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 it's my turn to breastfeed." It don't work like that. This is how it works. 
the woman has the baby. Her body is is providing the nourishment for the kid. So, what is the best situation for this kid? Is it is it is it the best situation for a kid for a woman to be at work all day pumping breast milk and then like you know coming like that? Is that the best situation? Probably not. But if that's your situation, more power to you. But there are women who want to be at home and take care of their house, take care of their kid, be there all day, be, you know, hit all those milestones with the kid. And I don't think there should be anything wrong with that. So I know all the trolls love talking about how Rachel was working at Target, but I'm sorry she quit. <laughs> so that's like that's no longer a thing anymore. Uh, which is kind of sad because we, now we don't get that 15% discount. But, man, I went on and on about this. Jesus. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, you know what? That being said, uh, let's talk about Robin Hood, our beautiful sponsor of the show. And this is very important, guys. You really should pay attention to this. Because your future is important. Investing in your future is important. And you will be surprised how you, you, if you start now by putting it, you don't even have to put a lot of money, just a little bit of money. And you will see over time how that really, I'll give you a personal story. It's like I have an investment account that I, that I started like 20 years ago. And I was only putting like $25 a month in it, right? And then I stopped putting money in it. I just looked at that investment account the other day and I couldn't believe how much money was in it. Okay. I'm telling you guys, did you know that even if you have a 401k retirement, you can, you can still have an IRA. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood gold. But get this through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from my other retirement account with a 3% match. That's incredible. That's right. No cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the IRA with 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com Boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claims as of quarter one, 2024, validated by the Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The, the 3% match matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. All right, y'all. Sign up for Robinhood. That was actually one of my, let me just go to the comments real quick before we go into these, um, um, what do you call it, uh, before I go into these reviews of these movies that I saw and uh, what do you call it, um, Love is Blind. I finally saw Love is Blind. Actually, I should talk about Love is Blind first. <laughs> uh, I'll do comments and I'm going to tell you all. I would, I would talk to y'all about Love is Blind. I finally saw, I, I haven't watched it. We talked about it a little bit on the Golden Hour, you know? And I was like, oh, okay. Because uh, this girl, so there's this one girl on Love is Blind, right? Um, and she said that she looked like, she said, well, people say I look like Megan Fox, okay? So we'll get into that after this. But first, let's get into a few of the comments, y'all. A few of the comments. Um, let's see. Nephocolophony, whatever. Congratulations, Eric. Love to see you being a father, bro, with the funky intro. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see here. Okay, so Mr. Santino, you're the killer 0398. Mr. Santino, you're absolutely wrong, brother. Stranger Things is the best TV show on right now. Season one, how can you tell a story in season one? Breaking Bad one season. Come on, Red. It was an episode with Andrew Santino. People are watching that. It's crazy. Uh, uh, let 
Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So here's someone that we need to get rid of. <laughs> you know, sometimes you go to the comments and you see like um like there's like there's so much negativity on the internet, man. It's so crazy. It's so crazy how negative people <laughs> have to be. Uh Chili Willy 7454. I hope you're going to see to the theater to see Dune 2. I did and we will talk about it shortly. Um, let's see, let's see, um, ah, whatever, a lot of the comments are just nonsense today, let's just get to the episode, <laughs> uh, all right, so first, so, yeah, man, saw Love is Blind, right, okay, finally saw it, and it was like, I, I, oh, wait, I gotta take this Robin Hood off the screen, um, it, it, oh, I did already. Yeah, so, you know, I get to this episode where, you know, you see the girl. I Like, Rachel had already been watching it, and I didn't know. So I got to the point in the episode where the girl is revealed, you know, they, she meets the guy for the first time. So they've been talking this whole time, you know, and as you know the concept of love is blind. They're behind a the thing. They don't know each other. And so they are emotionally falling in love with each other. That's really basically before they can see each other they emotionally fall in love with each other with each other but one thing about the show that i understand what they do is they go okay so there's emotional love and now they get them together in a house and now they're like let's see if there's physical love if they can be with each other so that part of the show is like it's important to to understand that they have that element in the show so you have to ask yourself do you like this concept is it good to like emotionally meet someone first and see if you like click and then later go and see, well, can I get past if they have something physical about them that I'm not attracted to? Or if they have like the way they are in real life, the quirks about things about them that can I get past those things? Or does it just work? You know? So that's like whatever. But this girl, she goes in the middle of their talking and falling in love, quote unquote. She's like, well, a lot of people say I look like Megan Fox. That was what she said, right? Okay. So if you have never met a girl and she says, I look like Megan Fox, okay? If you know what this would be like? This would be like if I'm on Love is Blind and I say to the girl on the other side, yeah, you know, people say I look like Drake. That would be, this is equivalent to that. Yeah, I'm a little Drake-ish. You know, they say I look like Drake. And then she sees me and she be like, oh, well, oh. Because like, I've put an image in this woman's head. She knows what Drake looks like. Yeah, do I look like Drake? Yeah, I'm light-skinned. <laughs> I could be Drake's father on a TV show, right? But I don't look like Drake! Okay. This is the girl. This girl... So then this website puts a picture of Megan Fox... Here's the thing, y'all. I almost get it. I get like she got friends and people around her and she's got to get dressed to go someplace. And somebody goes, hey, oh, girl, you look like Megan Fox, bitch. <laughs> this is my problem with this. You know, you don't look like Megan. This is disingenuous. OK, listen. For all her friends and people and everybody defending her, like even Brian Austin Green came out who was married to Megan Fox, is defending her. This is my thing. You on a show, Love is Blind, she probably doesn't always get the guy she wants. She knew what the hell she was doing. If you behind a curtain and you tell somebody, I look like Megan Fox, that picture of the girl in the red is who we going to think you look like. You have embedded an image in my head that you're going to look like that. So now I'm emotionally, now that is in the back of my head always when I'm talking to you. And so she shouldn't have ever have said that. So then when he finally met her, he really liked her at first. You could tell, right? He liked her. But then he says in the confessional, yeah, she really uh, led me astray on this one because <laughs> she don't look like she said she looked like Megan Fox. And he's like, she don't look like Megan Fox to me because his image. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here is the thing. 
if you if the person isn't in front of you and you tell me you look like a celebrity, okay? So and you pick Megan Fox, you're now when you're gonna think in your mind, when is the last time I saw Megan Fox? You're gonna think Transformers. You're gonna think her movies, modeling pictures. You're gonna you're gonna think of this person that you're like, oh wow. She looks you that's the image you have in your head. This is this woman's fault for putting that in his head. And then when he saw her, you can't help but be disappointed. They ain't the same. Okay? Now. This is no knock on her. This is the nuance of it, okay? So you know all of the people who try to be like, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, you know, just these fake faux outrage on the internet. Can we just be real? Can we just have a 100 conversation? This isn't about this girl being ugly. This girl, She's beautiful. She's a voluptuous woman. But she doesn't look like Megan Fox, okay? And... The fact that she embedded that image into this guy's head as they are emotionally falling in love was unfair to him because he's already on the show and understands he's going to meet someone that he don't know what they look like. And he's that's the concept of the show. She said she looked like Megan Fox. So then he now like, oh, OK. You can't help but paint a picture in your head of that. It, like, I, I'll say it again. If I was on this show and I said to the girl, yeah, people say I look like Drake. And then she sees me. Well, she going to be like, oh, you, oh, you, you, oh, you, is it Drake Johnson that worked down at the CVS? Like, which Drake do you look like? Because I could be like, well, I didn't. Oh, I said Drake, but I didn't mean the rapper Drake. You know, you ever you ever go to the post office on third? It's the dude that works behind the cat. That's Drake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are we talking about, man? So stop this nonsense of like, you know, getting mad at people who, who are getting on her. Like there are people who are trolling and being mean to the girl, right? But I'm saying let's get into the weeds of it, the nuance of it. Hey. Don't ever tell somebody you look like Megan Fox if they can't see you. Because I guarantee you, if this guy was in front of her and she said, well, you know, some people say I look like Megan Fox. She would have, it would have been totally different because she would have been like, you know, I mean, my eye, she would have been like, because she knows she don't look like Megan Fox. So then she, the guy would have been like, oh, you know what? I, I see what you're saying. I can, I can sort of see it. Right. And it would have been a totally different thing. <sighs> Hell out of here, man. Crazy. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's just get to the main thing. So I, like I say, y'all, I went to Atlanta and I got to see, um, I got to see, uh, Dune 2. Dune 2. First of all, I really, really enjoyed the first Dune. I thought it was a great storytelling. I think Timothy Chalamet is, a, he, I think he's a great actor. I believe him, you know, I really do believe him. The woman that uh, plays his mom, what's her name? Um, Rebecca Ferguson. She's great, you know, like it was very believable. It was a great story. It was a lot of like, they had to, they had to get us caught up on this like universe you know, and like, you know, what's going on? There's an emperor and there's these great houses and like there's this like, uh, you know, there's this planet that, you know, has these uh, these native people. But there's like this mineral in the sand in this planet that they use. It's like it's like oil, man. You know, it's like the oil of space travel. And this is the most valuable mineral in the whole galaxy, because without this. They wouldn't be able to travel throughout space, okay? That's the kind of thing that makes it so valuable, all right? 
So now there are these people, but there's these native people that live on the planet. It's like Avatar, man. You know what I mean? All the stories are pretty much the same in terms of like there's indigenous people and then some rich people are trying to come take the stuff from their land and then the people there have to fight. So that's what the, the, the thing's basically about. And in the original Dune, you know, this one, you know, uh, big family called the Atreides, you know, the, the emperor sends them over there and, they're, and then they're bitter enemies with the Harkonnen. You know what I mean? And so they've been fighting for centuries. And so the Harkonnen have been controlling the spice, but they're terrible to the people of the there. So then the emperor has some devious plan. Let's send the Atreides over there to them. They do it. Them do they do it? You know. So it's this whole story of like. And then at the and then and then like there's this underworld of like these like uh, witch women. You know, and they have like special powers, like Jedi powers, where they can make you do stuff. Sit down. You know, they have these weird. Their voice is weird, and then, you know, the people have to sit down. You know what I mean? It's like so, you know what I mean? It's it's very much like Star Wars stole the whole thing from them. So now cut to like Dune 2, you know what I mean? You know, his, his whole family was killed. His father was killed, and he's like one of the lone survivors, you know. He's like, he's the, of the royal family of the Atreides. Now he's stuck on this planet with these sand people and Zendaya is one of them and he's been dreaming about her because he's like the chosen one so he has like so of the witch women they have this uh power you know they have this weird power that they have and so but they, there's a prophecy that they've been putting into the world for like a hundred over a hundred years so they've been setting up this prophecy all over the place and then you know so now it's coming to fruition and then Paul Atreides you know played by Timothy Chalamet he's supposed to be the chosen one like Darth Vader okay anyway but anyways you know what I mean He's the Darth Vader of this story, you know. So this, all this part is like when Darth Vader was actually a good guy, right? Uh, was he ever a good guy, right? That's who Timothy Chalamet is playing. So he cut to now Dune Two. He's stuck on this planet, but he's fighting against the Harkonnen, and there's like all kinds of intrigue and politics and 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 like romance storytelling and and the angst of him being like he, you know, um, a slave to you know his calling. You know what I mean? And sometimes doing the right thing means you have to hurt certain people. But it's just the kind of thing about how power corrupts. And it's just a really grand story, you know? It's like a really grand story. And it was a long movie. And I actually want to watch it again because I feel like I missed stuff. But I really like the, what's happening. And I kind of wish this was more... I wish Dune was Game of Thrones style instead of these these movies like I wish they, they could have told the full story of um, because part of this movie is actually part of book one like I don't know how they're going to tell all this story in like two like three four movies I think they got to do like seven movies I don't know what the plan is um, but I feel like I feel like this would have been better told in hour long episodes of like 10 episodes on HBO or Netflix or something right but still, I think they did an outstanding job. I think it's a really great movie. I was captivated the whole time, even though it was so long. Like, it was so long to a point where, like, I know who else is in the movie, and you haven't seen those people yet. I'm talking about you an hour in, and you haven't seen Elvis yet, <laughs> or whatever his name is, you know? And I'm like, where's this guy? So, you know. Then you finally see that you see you learn more about the emperor and you learn you know I mean it's just so grandiose like I actually don't think I don't think that these characters that are in this movie are gonna be in the movies moving forward because apparently in the books they time jump you know where the next movies are about this guy's kids like we don't find out who the real chosen one is which like Luke Skywalker you know what I mean or whatever you know what I mean like it's like. You know, you have like Princess Leia and like Luke. This is the same kind of thing going on in this movie because his mom's pregnant, you know, and she in, you know, with a little girl. That's not a spoiler because that was in the last movie. You saw what was she was pregnant in the last movie. So anyways, my point is. You know, what I mean, um, it's like. There was a lot of storytelling going on. So Zendaya is in, in this way more in this movie. And, you know. I think that, like, if I had to pick, I would say she's the hero, right? She loves this guy, but she sees how this prophecy has controlled his life and her people. 
there's part of her people that believe in this so much that he is this Messiah and she sees the danger in that. She sees the danger in him in like, you know, how power corrupts people. And and then it's like on the other side, you know, you have this character, Paul Atreides, whose father was killed and his family was murdered and all his friends and his whole family was his 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 house of Atreides was destroyed you know, because of the emperor and, uh, and the Harkonnen and he's like, he's seeking revenge, but at the same time within him seeking revenge, he is also seeking to free these Freeman people who he has now grown to, to f very fond of. He counts himself as I'm one of you, but at the same time, he's like, the only way to free everybody is I got to take over. I mean, it's very similar to, uh, the star Wars prequels. I mean, it's very much like the Star Wars prequels, you know, it's like Anakin Skywalker, who was like telling, uh, telling like Luke and Leia's mom, like, yo, listen, if we, we can rule the empire, you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's, I could kill the emperor. I could kill the, you know, and we could take over you and I could rule in peace under our rule. So like when you're someone like that, you convince yourself that that's the best way. Like you convince yourself that like, yo, I know what's best and I'm going to, I'm going to do this for everyone. And I think that Paul Atreides is headed down that he's headed down that and Zadiah's character can see it, but she loves him. I mean, it's really great, man. It's very like Shakespearean and, uh, you know, and he's at every single one of these actors in this movie is fantastic, you know? So it's like. You know what I mean? <laughs> this guy, would you tap Timothy? <laughs> Listen, if you was in prison and he was the choice, you you know what I mean? What you supposed to do? <laughs> like all these like really like twinky, uh, what do you call it? Uh, movie stars now. I, I I don't understand it. Him, even the Spider Man guy, they got the same kind of like like little frame. You're like, what is this? Um. Anyways, <laughs> stupid question. Um, it's very much. I don't, like I say, I think it is like a very um, epic story that's being told. And I'm glad it's successful so they can continue to tell the story. You know, you want them to, to tell the whole story uh, so we can like really get invested in what's going on with this, with these people. Uh, you know, and I like I like I actually don't know if these same actors are going to be in the next movie because I think they're going to jump forward. So maybe they're going to cast someone else to be Paul Atreides at, at a certain point. So um Oh, that's so funny. Somebody just said, "Griffin, what the hell happened with Whitney and Bobby on on her pod calling you on the phone?" Um well, anyways, that's all of for Dune right now. I actually gonna I'm going to I'm going to address that right now. <laughs> First of all, Bobby is a Freaking, um, he likes to start shit, man. He, you know, he really likes to start stuff, man. And that's what he did. A long time ago when Whitney got really famous, before she got famous, everybody was just friends, comics, hanging out. It was cool. Then it, she got like big. And I went to go visit because I was friends with Chris D'Elia. So they were on that show Whitney together. Chris invited me to the set. So when I went to the set and I'm, I'm just on set, I see her and she goes like this. She hugs somebody and goes, oh, hey, how you doing? And then when she sees me, she gives me like the, oh, hey, it was like a snub. That's what she did, <laughs> right? Now, I've talked to her about this in the past. That's why I don't know why Bobby did this. Bobby and I had talked about this. We had talked about like how like I was like, yeah, she changed, huh? And this is a long time ago. I said, oh, yeah, man, she changed, huh? And then, so now cut to like 10 years later, he goes on a podcast and he's mad because he never got a, an audition for her show, right? So he says, oh, well, Eric Griffin said, you went to the, he went to the set and you asked him, what are you doing here? I never said that ever. I never said that. Bobby is a shit starting drama, likes to stir the pot motherfucker I never said that <laughs> and I already discussed this with Whitney years ago 
I was, you know, I said, yo, you changed. Remember? You, you acted different. She, and she already had her explanation. She was like, you know, I was different then and I was worried about it. You know, and it's fine. We're already fine. We're cool. Right? So I don't know why he did that. He ain't shit. Clip it and send to his ass. Bobby Lee ain't shit. Oh, drama starting mofo. So now that's, and so they, but I was actually in the middle of doing the golden, I was doing the golden hour at the time, right? So I was doing the golden hour and um, they call, they, they, he, so when I, they were trying to call me. So then when I went outside, the, the first call I see is Bobby. And then I answer that because I'm like, yo, what's up? And then he's like, ah, see, you didn't answer Whitney's call. And I was like, well, I didn't see it, you know, but I talked to her like shortly after we, we talked. But he'll make it out like, you know, then I saw him at the comedy store and I was like, bro, what are you doing? He was like, you said that. He knows I didn't say that. And then he, this is what Bobby does. He goes, well, it's your word against mine. I mean, you want to talk about a real piece of shit. <laughs> That's how he is. That's how he is. Well, it's your word against mine. That's what he said to me. Anyways. Make sure you come. Actually, this is so funny you say this. Make sure you come check me out at uh come check me out i'm my next uh set of uh shows coming up guys next set of shows coming up uh i'm gonna be at the tulsa looney bin april 5th through the 6th desert ridge improv april 19th through the 21st and i'll be at the mothership april 26th through the 28th so guys come check me out there all right last but not least uh let's talk about you know you know i like to watch um i i like to watch movies on planes that I would never watch. Like sometimes it's like I wouldn't even watch it at home. This is strictly a plane watch. Okay? And so the movie I watched on the plane is The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Now, first of all, I want to say this. The first Hunger Games movie is that is actually a great movie. It really is. Jennifer Lawrence is great in that. Like I wish that movie was rated R almost, you know? Because it's still like trying to be a kid's movie. But the concept and what's going on in that movie and how she is as an actress and and the things that are happening to her in this movie and how she deals with it and how they told the story, that is a great movie. Now, the subsequent movies after that, eh, some good, some bad. But it, the complete story, great. I'm with it. You, if you don't know what The Hunger Games is, it's like some like – alternate universe where there was like you know there's these districts and and they rose up against the capital and it was a terrible war and in punishment uh the capital decides that every district there's 13 of them have to send two kids to fight to the death you know right so it's a real like that's like a real terrible concept right all right so they made this sequel to the movie called the hunger games a ballad of songbirds and snakes i didn't i didn't have any desire to see it but also it's because like you know, things just were, the, the things were different. I don't go to as many movies, not just because I haven't a kid, but just everything that was going on in the world post pandemic, going to the movies and all that. It's just a different thing now. Right. And I just being on the road, I never got a chance to go see it. It kind of like they didn't really publicize it as well as I thought the marketing, I don't think was very good for this movie, but I got to tell you, I really enjoyed this movie. I really did. It stars uh, Rachel Zegler, Tom Blythe and Viola Davis. Now, first of all, the best person in this movie is Viola Davis. She plays this villain. But I got to tell you, Viola Davis is a tremendous actress. And I love sci-fi, crazy sci-fi movies when the people that are in it take it serious and make you believe that this person is a real character, not, a, not like Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dr. Freeze. You know what I mean? Like where it's like the cartoon. No, she plays this sort of devilish, evil person that is psychotic and you believe every moment of it. And it just made everything the other actors were doing better. You know, this guy, uh, whatever it's Tom Blythe, whatever his name is, he's like sort of the star, right? You're following him and he's actually a young version of uh, President Snow. He's a young version of him. So, you know, it's kind of like watching, again, you know, Anakin Skywalker. It's like watching Anakin Skywalker. We already know he's going to turn into Darth Vader. So this is like that kind of story. It's like we know who this guy, we know he ain't the best person. And that's almost good for this actor and the story because you don't have to pretend like he's good. You can make him do stuff where you go, ooh, man, why'd you do that? 
But I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a well-told story. If you're already invested in the universe, you kind of go, oh, okay, well, here's where it started. Here's the, they kind of implying a certain things in the movie. And you kind of like, they kind of like make like little, little Easter eggs for like what you already know of in, in the thing. But I thought it was good. You know, and this girl, man, this Rachel Zegler, she's actually a really great actress. Uh, you know, she's, she's great. She's a good singer. She's good looking. She's very exotic looking. We don't even know what she is. You know what I mean? So it's great. But I think the problem with her is all this off the camera, off the screen stuff that we know about her. You know, if you're like, if you're going to be like militant and like, you know, and you're not famous, I think that people will then see you and that's all they will see. I think this happened to, even to someone famous, it happened to, what's his name? Um, Oh my God. Why am I? Oh man, I'm forgetting their names. Oh, it's the star of um, Shawshank Redemption. Who who's the star of Shawshank Redemption, guys? Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, let me let me let me find it. This is so stupid. What, where's the cast of Shawshank? Why am I forgetting? Tim Robbins. Thank you. Ugh. All right, so Tim Robbins and his wife Susan Sarandon. Okay, here's something I think that happened to Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon. There was a certain point where they became very vocal political people. And all you would hear about is their political beliefs. When you do that, and this happens to like everybody right now, you know what I mean? Because of like, we know too much about people now. But they, I think that affected their movie career because it got to a point where like, when you see Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon, all you see now is politics, their political beliefs. So I think that's just my opinion. I think that hurt them. It shouldn't have, but it did. I think that's what's happening with this Rachel Zegler girl. She is always in the in the media for something now. Now she's not going to be a part of this Paddington 3 because of whatever. And then it's like some off the field stuff. And right recently she's like famous for like, you know, she was going to be Snow White. And then it was just like, I think they're going to, I don't even think they're going to make this movie anymore. I'm you know? Cola. Like, I don't think they're going to, uh, I don't think they're going to, um, I don't think they're going to make the movie anymore because she like went on like a whole thing about how, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, Snow White doesn't need a man to save her, and and that movie is too old, and like you know, it was like it was a real big like public rant about this. And if you're the if you're Disney and you're making this movie, you're like, what the, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Just say you don't want to be in the movie. We'll get somebody else. So it was like a whole thing, man. That I think, um, and I, I have my feelings on it either way. I I just think it's like. Like if you're making this art, not everything has to be about whatever this agenda is, you know? Like how do you do movies about, it's like if you're doing movies about like a, like characters in the 60s, how do you not do that? And, and, and then it's like, it's, it'd be like there's racism going on and you just ignore it. Like you just go, well, you know, we're just going to ignore racism. No, like if, the, if you're doing a, a period piece at around that time, this is what was happening, right? So it's like, I don't know what they're trying to do. So, so if you're somebody that's always talking about that, you, it takes away from like the art of it, whether you're right or wrong, right? So I think that she's like very like feminist vocal, and I think that it's hurting. I think it's hurting her, uh, who she is, to be a star because now when you see her, you going, oh, that's the girl that was making a big stink about stuff, as opposed to like when she goes on screen. She's this character now. I don't think she's famous enough where we can ignore who she is. I think like Zendaya is famous enough that if she was talking like this, we would be like, oh, Zendaya was going in. And then when we see her on screen, we might ignore all that because we've now established how famous she is and what we like about her. I don't think this girl has established that yet. Cause like I'm not even gonna get on her for being like her woke and all this. Women go through a lot, man. I get it. All the like she, I looking at all the stories about her. She was like, she was going in about some photographers at the paparazzi at Fashion Week, and she's she's always like she's an advocate. So I'm like, okay, cool. If you want to use your fame for that, 
But the thing is, I think she needs to establish her fame a little bit more before she uh, goes in the way she's going in. But that being said, I will say that I really enjoyed that movie. Uh, and I, I recommend seeing it, actually. If you are fans of Hunger Games, um, you know, if you're a fan of Hunger Games, I think you'll enjoy this movie. It's like seeing, like, the, like the third Hunger Games and how they were like, because you know, we know what it evolved into. So if you're into all that and you like that stuff, you know, so let's do it. You know, I, I, would, I would suggest you watch that movie. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching uh, the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate always the support. Make sure you check me out. Um, subscribe. You know, hit the subscribe button so you know I'm going to be on Twitch. I'm going to be on Twitch shortly because uh, you know, Rachel's going with the baby. And, you know, Patreon. I got Patreon content coming. Um, what do you call it? it? It's it's coming weekly. So make sure you uh, make sure you check that out. All right. So let's go with the, you know, I always have I always have the rap recap. Maybe it's time for, maybe it's time for the singing recap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Welcome back. guys thanks for watching riffin with griffin make sure you join the patreon make sure you check me out um coming to a city near you and take care and i will see you next week